This was going to be somewhat shorter and probably would have appeared in a later production block as an additional part of the Treehouse of Horror video, but then the following happened. If anyone's response back is, well, if it GR, you're not the center of the universe. And that's fair. But since I got called out in this video, I thought I'd respond. No, actually, I did not call you out, at least not directly. Believe me, if I meant to single you out, I would have done so by name. But hey, we can play your game if that's what you want. So today, we're going to be calling out for no good reason, aka Anthony Aguilar, aka Fan and Frenzy, aka Analysis Daily, aka Bugface, aka whatever other aliases you go under these days. Buckle up, kids, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Now I'm not naive, I knew that using clips from How Not To Brony while talking about the secret rift in KP was likely to provoke a response, and in that sense you could accuse me of baiting FNGR, but here's the thing. I don't tread carefully around anyone else, and why should I? After all, FNGR may have referred to me as a drama channel before, but the difference is everything I say is for a good reason. Every video I make has substance, and that's not going to change because I'm afraid of being on How Not To Brony. As a matter of fact, I've been featured on How Not To Brony four times now, or be it mostly in a more positive light, and the novelty wears off after a while. So anyway, what does the bug have to say this time? The answer is surprisingly little when you break it down. A lot of the response devolves into exactly the kind of Rachel is a scummy person rhetoric I explicitly stated I have no interest in. The revisionist history that Midnight Chimes is trying to respin is thus. Trolls, unjustified, bored one day, got up and hit KP. That's the Oblivion Fall version of that. I would like to remind most people on Dr. Wolf's Team Fortress Anarchy team, the vast majority of the people on that project didn't want KP there. And you don't have to take my word for it, Jerry said so. I'm not here to defend KP or argue what real crimes she may or may not have committed. Was that not clear enough in the video? And you'll forgive me if I don't consider hunting around the Limbo Skype group for dirt on someone to be a very productive activity under the circumstances. It's also interesting that while he picked on terminology I'd used and made a lot of superficial critiques, such as British Ninja being in Lily Pete's Discord at the time of his Rift video, which I was aware of incidentally, and it doesn't change his actions. FNGR never really got at the nucleus of the video. If it is Unova Brony now in charge of the old rift, then okay, that was my mistake, but it does not discredit my argument. I could easily go on a rant about him not calling Lily Pete by her proper name, but how relevant would that be as a counter-argument, really? When FNGR does hit on the core points of the video, i.e. that the secret rift are desperate to one-up themselves at every opportunity and Ann and KP links are trolls, he actually agrees with me. The difference is he sees both of these things in a more positive light. We at the Seeker Rift have been complete cunts to the Rift Cafe. As for dragging their name through the mud, one might assume you feel the action is undeserved. It is undeserved. Or perhaps a better term would be unproductive. The rift split happened a long time ago, and to drag it out is beating a dead horse. Besides, from the majority of those I've talked to, the general opinion is the secret rift is the better room to be in, so it's not like they need to enlighten the community about how much better their group is. As I said, it comes across as insecure, but you have nothing to be insecure about. You are already winning, which makes it all the more perplexing. Oh yeah, and then there's the part where FNGR actually defends trolls. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. But you've argued in bad faith where I think you only have two or three good points in this whole video. Those being that the Secret Rift is smug, we are, and Anon KP Links was born out of trolls. It was. But people with legit complaints attach themselves to it quickly. Midnight, the United States President's climb to the White House started with trolls. This seems strange and somewhat contradictory given that his grand rebuttal was how did I know Oblivion Fool's apology video was genuine? I'm going to be a true politician for a moment and answer a question with a question. Well, two questions to be precise. Firstly, what would the motivation be? And even if this was somehow another ploy for attention, would it make any difference? You've basically admitted yourself Ann and KP links were full of bullshit, and for every individual who did bring a legitimate concern to the table about KP, there was someone else who bought into that bullshit. As for arguing for trolls, I guess for no good reason has to hold this philosophy because without it he'd be out of a job. You know, there was recently a parody of A Christmas Carol on Kichi's channel which experimented with what would happen if FNGR was reformed. In this world, everyone lives in peace and harmony. No one's fighting over petty squabbles, no one's making hit videos on each other. It's bliss! Why wouldn't you want something like this? Because it's fake. 
none of them are actually happy. Now, a world where every pony is too afraid to speak up about their problems is most certainly not productive, but neither is the alternative presented, a community of gossip, troublemaking, and all-round unpleasantness. You went after everyone, whether they were big or small, and eventually became the drama center of YouTube. There is no community where you don't have your hand. The website has become a cesspool of drama, hate, and mayhem where no one lets things go and everyone settles their differences through videos. I believe this is meant to be exaggerated and somewhat tongue-in-cheek, but the funny thing is it's a fairly accurate depiction of what a world full of FNGRs might look like, and he honestly thinks this would be better than the first reality. In fact, both of these realities are toxic. When he is not flat-out admitting to being a troll or an asshole, FNGR will often claim to be saying what all the others are too afraid to say, like he is speaking for a silent majority. And okay, sometimes that may well be true. But then you have to question whether spitting venom at Dr. Wolf and KP each week is really helping any situation. For similar reasons, Anne and KP links did not help with the KP situation. This is what trolls do. They justify the damage they cause because occasionally, just occasionally, their actions might lead to a positive outcome. I've never really been convinced by the notion that FNGR is truly vindictive or has some grand agenda. He's just a troublemaker and an attention seeker who thinks he can get away with it by being honest about it. But the real reason he gets away with it is because he's smart, and in a strange way I actually admire that. Don't get me wrong, Aguila and I are from different sides of the track and there are certain things we'll never see eye to eye on, but what we do share is an appreciation for good analysis, and for that reason I think there is a curious sort of mutual respect between us. It's why even when accusing me of grade A quality bullshit, he'll still say I'm the last brony YouTuber he can stomach to watch, a statement he has since repeated to me directly. I think you had maybe one or two good points in this video, namely that the KP issue may have been past the stage of being resolved internally, but then I did use the word ideally for a reason. Now you mentioned a podcast, and I don't like to shy away from having my views challenged, but this should have already answered a lot of your questions. Perhaps it will open up some new ones, who knows, so I'll leave that up to you. As for your offer of a place in the secret rift, I vaguely remember that being brought up in a call once, I'll think about it, but in the meantime, if you still have a spot open, why not consider Wooden Sword? He is one of the most underrated all-round entertainers in the fandom. His production values are much better than mine, and his analysis is steadily improving as well. Just an idea. Reflecting back on the year just gone, one of my biggest problems has been a lack of communication with my audience, especially when my upload schedule was being disrupted by uni work and so on. So for that reason I'm planning to make more use of my Twitter in future, so if you want to keep up to date you should follow the link in the description and on screen now. Thank you.